So um, my next guest says the defense has thrown in the towel. There's no, but the question remains: It really should have justified expensive stocks actually becoming more expensive. I'm going to bring it down to Bonson Group Managing Director David Bonson. Uh, we have a lot of too much fun in here during commercial breaks. Yes. So. I mean, obviously, the, the knee-jerk reaction has been like, happy days are here again, yeah. right? Uh, and, and and many people are saying it's justified or whatever, but whatever, don't miss this rally. You have some some concerns, though. Well, what I would say is that the rally didn't start Wednesday. It, it had started six weeks before when bond yields started coming down. Markets are forward-looking mechanisms. They're discounting today what they believe about the future. So now people say, look, when the Fed starts cutting, that means that valuations have to go higher. And I say, wait a second. In the past, when the Fed starts cutting, it's because they had been raising before and valuations came way down. Valuations didn't come down. The S&P before this recent month was at 20 times earnings. So what you have to believe is that the S&P went from 20 to 21. Now it's going to go to 25. All you're saying is I want to invest into a bubble. It's not the way I recommend investing. But it is tough, though, for those who have been resistant. I mean, because oh, yeah. before before Wednesday, there was still a large group out there that believed caution, money on yeah. the sidelines, only seven stocks are leading this thing. Uh, and, and so what do you say to people like that who are trying to catch this thing late? But let me let me make a suggestion. There's a third option. It's not either be in or don't be in. It's be selective. Right. That right now the whole index is first of all very weighted to about seven companies. Second of all, it's a bit about multiple expansion. You're hoping the PE ratio goes higher. It's already very high. What about buying things that are out of favor, buying value, buying cash right, flow, right. but individual stocks? You'll be wrong uh, on you've some. You've got a list, too. We're going to yeah. go over that in a minute. But I have the theme of the show today is, okay, is the tail wagging the dog. Yeah. Did, did Jay Powell, you know, bend to the will of Wall Street and, and or maybe the, uh, you know, the Biden administration? Uh, or was this something that they truly in their hearts believe is the right time, the semi-victory lap? No, this was not necessarily about Wall Street. Credit spreads didn't widen enough. Um, I believe there's a mixed bag here. We're going into election year. They don't want to be perceived as having thumb on the scale, and it looks bad if they don't telegraph it now, if they all of a sudden start doing it next year. Mm -hmm. They also don't want to be tightening in the middle of an election year. So I think those things are there. I don't think that's conspiratorial. It's just human nature. And then ultimately, they they want to do a victory lap, and they can't do it if they keep going and put us in a recession. Well, Powell really wants to do one. Because he yeah. took he took hell hell uh, and also you know those showdowns in the in the Senate and you know, I know Paul Volcker you know Paul Volcker kind of stuff two areas that you really like uh, have been under some hadn't really performed that well oil the oil rally petered out and dividend stocks have been just massive laggards so that's the part I'm confused by uh, some of our biggest holdings we've talked about Blackstone is up seventy five percent on the year Apollo up forty five percent on the year Simon Property up over thirty percent on the year Broadcom up over a hundred percent on the year. These are dividend growth stocks, high quality. So the selected. point here is then you have to be specific about the dividend names. You just can't buy the aristocrats per se. You no. Know, as a matter of fact, aristocrats are not necessarily the types of names you even want to own because sometimes they're backward looking and they're not forward looking dividend growth. You want companies that are reliably going to grow the dividend. And the aristocrats generally do that. But no, I think I think that you have to be selective. And I'm really pleased with how we've done on energy too. You brought that up. This is not about oil. Right. It's midstream energy is up 20 percent on the year. Oil's right. down a few percent right. on the year. Midstream is where the dividend growth is. That's what we're heavily invested in. We've got 30 seconds. I want to share with the audience the names that you that are sort of on your buy list right now. Truist, Verizon and Walgreens. I just have time to zero in on Walgreens. I'm yeah. really uh, interested in that one because I, I just I see a mixed bag with these drugstore stocks. Yeah, Walgreens is definitely a very risky play. And what you have here is a dividend that's grown for 60 years that the bad news has been priced in. They have have assets to keep paying the dividend. That's why we talk about a strong balance sheet. Their balance sheet's working. Mm-hmm. They've been paying the dividend with the balance sheet. It's not going to be a drugstore play. It's going to be a health care play. They hired this guy from Cigna to reinvent what they want to do. And I think that they're ultimately going to make it or break it as a health care uh, provider. They have the real estate to do it. They shed bad stores. There's bad news. It's a risky play. But sure. it, that, I think that's been priced in. By the way, it's up about 20% in the last month. Excuse me. <laughs> David, great stuff. Love talking to you, my man. Love talking to you. Appreciate it.